Okay, welcome to my video on my 1996 M-788 Type 1 military shelter conversion into a camper. So what you're looking at, we'll walk around while we talk about it, is a, a military uh, shelter, it's a electronic shelter, designed to go in the back of a Humvee that's been converted to a trailer mount by uh, attaching it to a M101A1 military surplus trailer. So if you're familiar with the M101 trailers, those are Vietnam era trailers, so 1967-ish. Uh, and what uh, what was done was the uh, bed was removed and only the trailer frame was retained. Quick rock around here. The neat thing about an M-788 is that this is an all aluminum construction. There is no wood structural in the walls. Uh, what it is is, and maybe I can show you a sample of it, it's a honeycomb of what looks like a wax covered cardboard. And what you can see there is uh, I've, I've attached on this side. So let's go quickly into one of the upgrades here. This is a Jeep Wrangler tailgate table. So it's designed to go on the tailgate of a Jeep Wrangler, but I've put it here on the side of the camper. It gives you a nice two foot wide by about a foot deep quick access table. Folds right up and you can stow it for transportation. We'll also go into a little bit about how I installed this awning. So this is an eight foot by eight foot awning. That'll pull out, I'll show you how that works. Air conditioner here on the front, tongue box. Two propane tanks. Propane tanks are really important in this build because everything's running on propane. The generator runs on propane, the hot water heater, um, the, the heater itself, and even the backup heater as well. So if you look here, Lunette ring. So this is a pencil hitch toe style, uh, which gives you much better articulation when you're going off road. And we're also looking at all four corners have really tall jacks. Uh, the clearance on this camper is pretty amazing for off roading. So really tall jacks there. Also, you'll notice that this here, this is the uh, parking brake lever. So locking down those, those wheels, you have one for each hub, really helps with the stability when you're off-road. Take a look in the tongue box real quick. Okay, so in the tongue box, this is where I keep my generator. So it's a small, about 2,000 watt, uh, it's called a Sportsman propane generator. Love propane for a generator uh, because there's no need to, to winterize it, no need to worry about the carburetor clogging up, propane's very, very clean burning. And of course, I have lots of propane on board. And you can run um, you can run that generator for about 11 hours on, on one propane bottle. So you get a lot of time out of it compared to gas. So these uh, wheels, they've been reversed actually. So normally you would install it the other direction on an M101, but to get it a little bit wider uh, wheel stance, this has been reversed to flip outwards. And this is a uh, military size. It's a 16 inch with a nine inch sidewall. So that comes out to be about 34 inch tall tire sitting on leaf springs. Let's go ahead and crawl underneath real quick. I'll kind of show you what's going on underneath this. First you'll see there, there's my gray water bucket. We'll show where that's connected. All right, so here's the axle. So the neat thing about these axles, you can see those hubs are, are very substantial, but the neat thing about these is they're actually uh, dampened. So you see you have spring uh, shock absorbers there next to the springs. And so shock absorbers are really nice on a trailer. Definitely keeps your load from shifting around inside. So I can go off-road, well, off-road things will shift, but I can go long distances and everything's kind of in its place, not too much tying down. And so you can see it's a steel frame Let's see if we can turn it over here. See, so I get the view to the bottom. What you're looking at there is I've installed one inch foam along the bottom. And so the one inch foam just gives you a little better insulation. And I had the space to do it, so I figured why not? It's a nice smooth bottom down underneath here. Moving back out, you can see there one of the brackets that hold the box down to the M101 chassis. 
that I made. Okay, let's swing them back out here. Um, you can see there's a nice deck for this unit. And the deck is just awesome. Um, standing headroom, there's also an awning over the deck. And so you can stand even at like 6'3", 6'4". Uh, you can stand comfortably on that deck. And it gives you a nice spot to kind of gather yourself to take a to get to grab the handle get in so you don't have to grab it from from ground level it would be a little bit of a reach it's good for my kids too to get in as well and you also see i put a mid step in there too so it's a double receiver hitch here uh so there's room for a second step so it's not quite as big of a step again for mostly for kids so let's move around here to some of the upgrades to make it into a nice camp or some of the convenience upgrades one thing you're looking at here are leveling gauges. So you can level it in both directions. Uh, those are very, very handy. Make sure you get a nice level footprint here. I'll show you here. This is where the electrical, sorry for the shaking. Here's where the electrical is installed. So you can uh, plug the generator in there. It can also run it off of shore power. Moving down here, the next little cover for the shaking. The next little cover is the propane quick connect. So if I zoom in there, you can see uh, that's just, you can really quickly, just like kind of like an air hose quick connect, plug in the propane for the heater. Next thing you're seeing there is a low point vent. So my thought was kind of to, to help increase circulation, also to get air to that propane heater, uh, external air, so they're not using up all your oxygen. This is a nice sheltered vent so you can't see but it opens at the bottom i'll go ahead and put you in there so you can see upside down that's where the air comes in and then there's also some splash guards inside there to prevent water from getting inside the camper next thing i'll show is i've added a external locker here so just have it temporarily held here but all right so the locker uh is nice uh this is where i keep all the propane accessories Things that are going to be used outside the camper. Uh, there's a shelf in there for uh, small things on top. You can see the top of my uh, my uh, lantern for the for being outside. Uh, there's no exterior lights on the camper for um, for the camping part of it. Just just for driving. Okay. So all that is is that's basically a school locker. That's a 12 inch by 15 inch deep school locker fit really nicely in the wheel well where we had a little extra space. Again, these wheel wells are a little oversized so they can fit into a Humvee and you know that just wasn't really necessary. So I thought that was a good place I could use a little more space. You can also see that the camper didn't come with any windows. This shelter would have been an EMP proof shelter and so wouldn't it have had windows at all from the military, but we did add windows, uh, get a little more ventilation, a little more light. It's a 6,000 BTU air conditioner underneath that cover there. A little bit bigger window on this side. And here you can see down here, let's, let's show you the, the water connection. So there is a water inlet connection that's actually not hooked up right now. That's the front one. And the back one is the drain connection for the sink that goes down to the bucket. Nice to have a ladder. So this roof can actually support 660 pounds. It's a very, very strong roof. In fact, one thing I want to point out, um, let's talk a little bit about weights while we're looking at this, weights and measurements. The box of this is eight feet long by about seven feet wide. The uh, total height is about eight feet, a little over eight feet to the top of the awning. And the whole box, the whole aluminum M788 shelters, it's not heavy at all. The whole box weighs about 650, 700 pounds, uh, not including all the uh, interior buildouts. And the frame, the M101 frame, just the frame and the hubs and the axles, so everything except for the body, which has been removed, that weighs about 950 pounds. So you're looking at a relatively light camper relative to its size. Total length of the whole camper is under 13 feet. It's about 12 and a half feet from the lunette ring to the to the tail lights, not including the deck area. So the deck area, we have some nice steps to climb up to the deck. Those can fold up pretty easily for transport. So that's how they fold up. 
just on a, a little bar and they're also adjustable a little bit you're never quite right on level so you can get about an inch and a half or so of adjustment to and, and you can do it differently on either side of the ladder to get it to the nice be nice and be flat wherever your campsite is uh, the deck is um, a carrier for say like a uh, scooter or something it's got a 500 pound capacity and I've had two grown men standing on it and it, it does flex a little bit but uh, nothing bends and it's held up to that weight so real cheap way to get a little deck on here and then there's the awning the awning folds down for transport so it'll lay it against the door when you're driving uh, but it's all stainless hardware and it's actually pretty stiff with those aluminum edge pieces with some aluminum reinforcement Let's take a look up here on the roof. Okay. So, thing you're going to see up here is there's three skylights and then there's a roof vent. And there is some hail damage uh, from back in its military days. So, the skylights and, and even the roof vent, those are all in places that were previously where the antennas were uh, for the military vehicle. So, um, when it was in military use, you'd have big antennas that would come out there, no longer need those, so they're just kind of capped with uh, acrylic, acrylic covers. Now there's the tow vehicle over there in the far distance, the Honda Ridgeline. And then there's the handle for the other way to climb up, the military way to climb up, which were some pull-out stairs that were on that side. All right, before we go in, let's do a demonstration of the awning for you. So I'll go ahead and pull the awning out. You can kind of see how easy it is and uh, how that functions. Let's make sure we're going to get it in frame. Okay. That yeah, looks pretty good. So there's a little lock here. Flip that. Loosen this. And you're loosening both arms. And the arms are also retained so they don't swing out. A little mid retainer. Now this is a standard uh, awning. It's an Aleco awning that you can just buy online and it will fit on there. So here we go. It stands out. Okay. And then you slide out your support arms. So leave that loose for right now. Find the other support arm. And then we can slide out the other way. Now, you see the bars could be in the way for camping. So what you can do actually is they will quick detach off of the hamper and you can swing them down. And actually, it would have been a little easier to do this had I gone ahead and locked this in, but I'll do that now. Okay. So you want to lock your crossbars in right here. This is how you lock down the crossbars, kind of before you swing it off. Side a little tighter too. Alright, so there the awning's up. Let's give you a little walk around on the awning. Hopefully you're able to see all that. I don't have the legs totally straight because uh, we are doing this just as a quick demonstration. But I'll show you how it's kind of bolted on. So there's four bolts. And I always like to use all stainless hardware. I also like to use uh, nut certs. So most of these things are attached by just screwing them into nuts. That way you can uh, you can remove them easily. So 
All you have to do is connect these four spots. Then there is the rail across the top, and that's actually on the roof uh, that holds the awning track. So that's great. It's a nice little sheltered area for, for camping. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit about the door. Heavy duty door. So first thing you'll notice on this door is you've got the central latch there, which actually does have a, I'll go ahead and pretend like it's locked. So you can see it's got a deadbolt there. Also extends a deadbolt out the top and a deadbolt out the bottom. So you have three points of contact. This door can also be uh, locked basically from the inside. So no one can mess with you. Let's say someone were to try to put a lock on out here. You can pull this pin, remove this knob, and that'll actually disconnect the outside door handle so you can still open it from the inside, even if someone's restraining the outside handle. So you can't get stuck in here. Also has a really nice uh, hinge down here that'll hold the door open in high winds for you. Now let's get in here our first look on the inside of the camper. So let's go ahead and move into there. So I'll show you some of the features inside the camper. Um, so let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the use. Why did I build this camper? Well, I built it for weekending. So everything is sort of set up with the idea that you can go home and you can resupply water, food, and uh, wash your sheets and whatnot. You can do that all uh, about once every three to maybe seven days. Uh, so this isn't really meant for long duration camping. Um, move on in.